Let's break down the road ahead. Wharton School Professor of Finance Jeremy Siegel joins us. Professor, do you think it's justified given what we've seen on rates, on geopolitics, headwinds piling up? Well, Sarah, we know we had an incredible steady rise from last October, almost record setting, not a 2% uh, uh, decline. And, and, you know, that actually is not healthy either because you get momentum players just jumping on the market. I, I think a little pullback. And by the way, I don't even think we have a 5%, which is the minimum definition of a pullback. But uh, a little bit of softening is certainly not uh, unhealthy for the market. I, I think we're going to get a good PCE deflator number uh, next, Friday. next week. Yeah, uh, which uh, I think 2.7% um, uh, will be the lowest in three years. And by the way, that's only three uh, tenths away from the year-end target uh, that the Fed set in March of 2.4% of for uh, that deflator. So I think, uh, yeah, we had three uh, disappointments on, on CPI. I think PCE will come in, and I think our CPIs are going to start coming in uh, in May and, and June. So, uh, and, and when we take a look at the futures, we've squeezed down to basically uh, one cut uh, uh, yeah. by December. I actually think that we could get more if we get these good uh, uh, deflator numbers uh, and inflation numbers. So I, I think, uh, you know, I, I still see gains uh, in the market uh, going forward this summer. I know that the PCE is the Fed's so-called preferred inflation measure, but the CPI has really captivated the attention of investors and of the Fed. You, you heard me go through all the reactions of these Fed members. They changed their tune after the March CPI report. So how are they going to explain if you, if you think they'll be encouraged by a better PCE, which they should be, how do they explain that gap and how do they convince investors, the American public themselves, that they're doing the right thing if, they, if they're cutting based on PCE? Right. Well, first of all, the, the, the CPI and, and, and the producer price index come out a couple weeks before the PCE. So it's the most informative data uh, that that economists and the Fed has to to predicting that PCE. I look at the CPI much more importantly uh, also. But I see good trends if forward looking in that CPI. Uh, for instance, we, we've talked about the fact that that shelter uh, sh actually shelter and in insurance are more than 50 percent of the last 12 months CPI core increase and looking forward, both of those look very much more favorable, uh, particularly the shelter uh, 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 segment, which is 41 percent of the CPI core. Uh, so uh, looking forward, those those are those are very promising and important factors that could suppress the CPI and that will feed into the PC deflator. So your view is we're going to get more cuts now than the market is expecting, and that's a good reason to buy stocks? Yeah. I mean, that. I think that now that, you know, we could all say at the beginning of the year, the market was way overly optimistic with four or five cuts. Now it's squeezed down to one. Um, and I actually think that we might get two or three uh, cuts by the end of the year. I don't think the Fed knows. I don't think really anyone knows. They follow just month by month what the data is. Um, and by the way, one thing that's important that, that Chairman Powell said, now he said there was disappointment in the, in the CPI. However, he did say we have a dual mandate. If the economy softens, and you mentioned that some people are talking about a, a softening March, early April, uh, that is another reason for us to cut rates uh, uh, unless inflation is, let's say, out of control. They really have to look at both of those. And I found those words to be very encouraging in terms of uh, forward action for the Fed.